वेलकम बैक इज द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ यूटिलिटी ऑफ एनी यूज टू आस इन अंडरस्टैंडिंग डिमांड इफ यूटिलिटी कैन नॉट बी मेजर्ड इन दिस वीडियो वी यूज अ डिफरेंट अप्रोच विच डज नॉट रिक्वायर्स अस टू मेजर यूटिलिटी बट स्टिल गिव्स अस यूजफुल इनसाइट्स इनटू अंडरस्टैंडिंग द डिटरमिनेंट्स ऑफ डिमांड दैट इज डिटरमिनेंट डिमांड द कांसेप्ट ऑफ डिमांड एंड द कंज्यूमर बिहेवियर विदाउट एक्चुअली हैविंग अस टू मेजर यूटिलिटी so let's jump straight into the video so guys we are talking about the ordinate utility which is the indifference curve analysis in this video so basically the ordinate utility or the indifference curve analysis the theory of indifference analysis was originally it was developed by pareto and was it was later developed by hicks now pareto and hicks both were very famous economists so it was originally developed guys by pareto and subsequently developed by hicks now bit of you know sort of um introduction here now guys remember that ordinal utility or the indifference curve theory is basically an alternative approach to consumer equilibrium right so you could say that it's an alternative method or an alternative approach or an alternative theory to consumer equilibrium without any need for us to actually you know sort of measure the utility in cardinal numbers now remember that the ordinal utility approach is based um on the premise on the on the assumption that the utility um of a commodity cannot be measured in absolute quantity or in absolute sense or in absolute numbers right and when we say that that it cannot be measured in absolute numbers but what we are saying is that instead we are giving an alternative approach now that we are saying that this theory or analysis it will basically rank right it is going to rank the different combinations or it is going to rank the different bundles in the order of preference in the order of the preference okay i prefer this over this bundle right now bear this in mind now this theory is basically assuming it's assuming what it's assuming that consumers can decide consumers have the power to decide they cannot measure the utility they cannot give it a quantifiable number but they can decide at least that whether they prefer the combination of bundle a over the combination of let's say bundle b so for example if we have two baskets so let's say two bundles and in basket 1 we have four pizzas and let's say three donuts and basket 2 on the other hand consists of two pizzas and four donuts we have two different baskets so the consumer you know at least at least the consumer could say that you know which basket he would actually prefer the consumer have the it has a sense to actually say that okay fine i would prefer basket a or maybe basket 1 or maybe basket 2 right um or he could you know sort of the consumer could be maybe sort of indifferent between them you know he's like okay both baskets are i prefer both or sort of you can give me either this or you can give me either that so it's sort of indifferent between them but remember that this theory is not assuming it is not assuming that we can actually measure that preference so 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 this theory is not assuming by how much would the consumer prefer one basket over the other and this is exactly what i've written here that the consumer will not be able to actually tell you that by how much to what extent or the magnitude of his preference so the magnitude of the preference or the magnitude of the ranking the consumer will not able to tell you right or just by how much or to what extent the consumer likes either basket so if i am saying i like basket 1 so by how much will i like basket 1 i cannot say that right because that is what the ordinal utility or the indifference curve analysis is telling us that we cannot measure the utility right in absolute sense now remember that the ordinal utility or the indifference analysis is basically analyzing consumer behavior um or analyzing consumer equilibrium or the theory of demand it's determining the demand consumers willingness and ability to buy um you know a certain combination um uh, without actually having to measure utility so 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 basically it's telling us that how a rational consumer would actually choose between two goods he would actually choose between two goods and, and that too without us having the need to actually measure utility because in in um you know in um, the the marginal utility approach or the cardinal approach we we had to measure utility we did measure utility in our, in our absolute sense right 
uh, we measured utility in utils and then we also measured utility in money terms later on as well. So guys, now you need to know that the indifference curve analysis is basically involves the use of indifference curve, number one, and the use of budget nine. So basically, when we're talking about the indifference curve analysis or the consumer equilibrium through indifference curve, we're talking about two things that we need to know. We will study that in the later videos. This is an introductory video on the indifference analysis. That is, we're going to be studying what indifference curves are and what budget lines are. So the entire analysis is based on the indifference curve and the budget lines. So basically what we're going to be doing is that we are basically going to be studying you know, the indifference analysis. In the indifference analysis, we're going to be studying the indifference curves first. And those indifference curves will actually describe the consumer's taste, right? And then what we'll do is that we'll introduce a budget line in our, in our videos after the indifference curve. And the budget line is going to tell us the different consumption possibilities that are open to the consumer, right? And once we're done with the indifference curve and the budget line, then we're going to be reaching an equilibrium so that we are able to consume the bundle that allows them to reach, allows the consumer to reach the highest possible levels of satisfaction. Very good. Perfect. Now, guys, remember that, okay, fine. Once you've reached the highest possible level of satisfaction, once you've reached the highest level of preference or the highest level of satisfaction, uh, we've reached the consumer equilibrium. Then, you know, we also need to see that what if the price changes, what if the income changes, how is that going to affect consumer behavior? So we need to see how consumer alters its own behavior, uh, you know, if sort of either income goes up or down or price goes up or down. And then we're going to be deriving the, the negatively sloped, the inverse, uh, you know, the negatively sloped demand curve, the downward sloping demand curve um, in a more satisfactory fashion, right? In a more satisfactory um, fashion than is and that too because we are saying that we're claiming Hicks claimed that you know there were weaknesses in the margin utility theory so the indifference curve will derive because we derive the downward sloping demand curve in the margin utility theory right remember remember you guys saw my videos in this video I mean in this indifference analysis we're also be going to be deriving the negatively sloped demand curve in a more satisfactory fashion because we're comparing it with the way, the reason why I've written in a more satisfactory fashion is because actually the indifference curve analysis what a crit was actually a critique to the marginal utility theory, right? So in that sense, we can say, in that context, we can say that we are deriving the marginal utility, we are deriving the negative slope demand curve in a more satisfactory fashion than is done with the marginal utility theory, right? And also guys, one last thing before I end the video, I just want to tell you if let's say I give you an example where I'm going to be telling you the basic difference between the marginal utility theory and the indifference analysis, it's quite simple. Let's, 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 you know, uh, before we move on to the indifference curve, let's sum up this difference. And let's say that we have a bundle of goods where the bundle one contains six apples, three oranges, five lemons. Bundle two contains eight apples, two oranges, and four lemons. And bundle three contains seven apples and so on and so forth. So guys, if this was our utility theory, that is a marginal utility theory, the consumers would have easily, we can easily assume that the consumers would be able to tell us that whether they are better off or worse off if they consume bundle two over bundle one. And not only that, to what extent are they better off or worse off over bundle, by consuming bundle two over bundle one and by consuming, let's say, bundle three over bundle two. And if they consume bundle three over bundle two, to what extent has the utility gone up, right? So basically, the consumer is uh, sort of, um, you know, the consumer is sort of telling us that if we consume bundle two or bundle one, we are better off than bundle one. And by what extent are we better off than bundle one? That is exactly what the consumer would be able to tell us in margin utility theory, because the consumer is able to measure that utility or measure that satisfaction, right? And the extent of that satisfaction. And he could also, let's say, tell us that if he consumed uh, bundle two or bundle one, and then he consumed bundle three or bundle two. So you could say the consumer could actually say the increase in utility from consuming bundle two or bundle one was much higher than the increase in utility of for consuming of consuming bundle three or bundle two. So bundle two was more than bundle one in terms of utility, while bundle three was less than bundle two in terms of utility. So basically, the consumer is able to tell us the extent of that satisfaction. And if we say that, then it means that, you know, our utility is cardinally measurable, right? On the other hand, if we can post this, uh, use this example, bundle example in our indifference analysis. So we could say that the indifference um, analysis is using sort of a much weaker assumption. Um, weaker assumption in the sense that 
because we are not able to measure utility. So in that sense, we are we are, we, we are claiming a much weaker assumption and saying that you know the the consumers would only be able to order the bundles or rank the bundles in their order of preference. You know what they could say. You know we prefer bundle two over bundle one, or we prefer you know what we prefer bundle three over bundle two, bundle two over bundle one, bundle three over bundle two. Yeah, but then by by what extent do they prefer bundle two over bundle one? or bundle 3 or bundle 2 that the consumers cannot claim and if that's in that context in that sense we say that our utility is ordinarily ordinarily measurable right that's what ordinal utility is it cannot be measured in absolute sense we can just um, give our preferences and sort of rank our bundles in the order of our preference that is what the indifference analysis assume that the consumers will be able to do that instead of ranking it which is a much uh, which is a you know big critique or criticism that Hicks made over the marginal utility theory so I hope you had an understanding of what the indifference curve analysis and what is coming you know what is going to be coming um, in my YouTube videos on the A2 micro playlist so I'll see you around in my next video where we're going to be starting with the indifference curves. Until then, take care.